And now, Michigan Reimagined with Chris Buck. So these have been challenging times for everyone, and the pandemic has stretched us all profoundly and differently. And I find myself pausing to reflect on how good I actually have it and remind myself that there are people dealing with true hardships as compared to my inconveniences. So here to discuss a local organization serving those who are really in need is the executive director of Haven House, Mr. Gabriel Biber. Uh, Welcome, Gabe. Thank you, Chris. It's great to be here. So for those not familiar with Haven House, you know, can you tell us where it's located uh, and kind of when it was founded and by whom? Sure, absolutely. Um, Haven House was founded way back in 1983, um, and it was really um, a coordinated effort among community members um, to fill the need that they saw in the community at the time. Obviously, that time in the 80s, um, you know, while there were a lot of people, you know, soaring to great heights financially, there was also a lot of financial hardship. Um, and so the organization was actually founded um, with a different name called the Economic Crisis Organization, or Economic Crisis Center Organization. And that was really an opportunity to help um, community members who um, founding themselves housing insecure, um, often because of rising prices, um, shortage of housing in the community. And in particular, what they found at the time was, while there were opportunities for, for example, for single adult men who were facing homelessness or for um, single women and, and small children, there were some families who were falling through the cracks. And those included two-parent families, single dads with kids, um, and even uh, moms who had teen sons, um, who at that time were being otherwise excluded from the existing opportunities um, that the Lansing community had to support families that were uh, facing homelessness or experiencing homelessness. So in 1983, um, the community came together. um, The name was changed to Haven House shortly thereafter, um, and the location has changed. But um, since then, it has uh, existed in East Lansing. We are right next to the U.S. Post Office uh, at the corner of Saginaw and Abbott, and we um, really are part of the community there, but we serve the entire greater Lansing area. Um, And so for us, emergency shelter for families who are experiencing homelessness has really been at the core of our identity ever since that founding. Part of what's really um, grown and changed for Haven House, especially in the last few years, is an increased focus on preventing homelessness and trying to partner with others in the community to try to make a difference in um, really that long-term sustainability for housing, um, not just for, you know, single families or single parent families or two parent families, but really overall working with other agencies, trying to make the Lansing area a place where everyone has access to affordable housing. Got it. Okay. So Haven House is all wrapped in the, the housing crisis that people can be in. Prevention now, as you mentioned, is, is certainly a, uh, a focal point for you. But, but the services that Haven House provides, is, 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 is it exclusively housing? So really, um, what we're geared at is helping families obtain and retain permanent affordable housing. So for a family, we really try to meet them where they're at. You know, some families, they've got employment. Others are underemployed. Um, You know, some families are going through a crisis. Maybe um, a family member has a medical situation. Um, Often we're dealing with families where maybe one of the parents um, has passed away and the, you know, remaining parent is really struggling to, you know, use their, um, you know, existing sort of safety net um, of connections, but also trying to, you know, face raising kids in a, in a whole new way. Um, so for us, housing is really the goal. And if we can help a family stay in safe, affordable, decent housing or get as quickly as possible to housing, for us, that's that most important first step. From there, we do continue to work with families on a number of other goals they may have from, again, increasing their employment, helping go back to school, um, kind of you name it, um, really working um, with the families to kind of customize their longer term goals and a plan to get there. Got it. So, how did the pandemic affect your organization overall? Well, it was a it was a huge blow, obviously, to to a lot of people in the community. Um, you know, as soon as March thirteenth, twenty twenty, rolled around, which was when um, the announcement came down that Michigan public schools were going to be going um, online and and physically um, closing the doors, um, we made a decision at that time to shift our shelter services. Um, to a non-congregate model. And for us, that meant utilizing local hotels. And so what that allowed us to do was to make sure that families who were um, being provided with emergency shelter had the opportunity to isolate as needed, um, more privacy, more ability to, you know, have their own um, individual bathrooms and, and, um, you know, isolate to not only, you know, prevent and mitigate um, COVID, but also deal with it, you know, should it crop up in their family. 
Now, there were a number of um, kind of pros and cons to that. Obviously, the pros were that increased, um, you know, health uh, uh, ability to, you know, support families in that way. But um, we did lose out on some of that direct contact that we have. Typically, when a family is staying at Haven House, our staff are working with them every single day. That's meeting with the family, identifying housing options that they're going to be looking at that day, working with them on their budget and so forth. So it was difficult for us really to work with families in that same intensive way, um, you know, right when the pandemic hit. Um, at the same time, um, we did take advantage of that um, that disruption in our normal services. We did a very extensive renovation of our actual shelter facility. We completely gutted um, all of the shared bathrooms that had existed up to that point and completely rebuilt them um, with the help of a local builder um, to make those bathrooms um, individual family bathrooms. Um, first of all, to you know help again mitigate that that COVID stress, but also to provide a more dignified. Um, client-focused and trauma-informed kind of experience for for families. Um, so right at the end of July of 2021, um, we did fully resume our on-site services. We still obviously have a lot of precautions in place, but um, you know one of the things that the community faced throughout the pandemic was um, kind of this um, double-edged sword of the eviction moratorium. And while the various eviction moratoria did prevent um, some families and households from becoming evicted, it didn't really alleviate some of the underlying problems and causes that cause people to become housing insecure. Hmm. So we're, we're obviously aware of, you know, some of the stimulus payments and other things that came out. Um, but even with, you know, a hot job market out there, um, what we found was that, you know, families were continuing to face struggles in making ends meet. And even, um, you know, as we know, families that are employed um, sometimes are not uh, making enough money to you know, meet their basic needs and also have that um, sort of nest egg or um, emergency reserve of savings. Um, and for most of the families that we deal with and that we help, really that um, lack of any kind of emergency savings can be the make or break between you know being able to stay one more month in a in a rental um, or having to become homeless. And for us, you know, we're working not only with families that are in their own rentals, um, but some that really have kind of been um, forced out of the rental market. And that may be because they've got a formal felony conviction or a former um, just rental eviction on their record, um, which can be a real barrier to, to finding housing and keeping housing. So, you know, the, the stresses on us as an organization, fortunately, um, we've been able to be kind of flexible and resilient. Um, we have a strong fundraising program um, and a diverse um, uh, sort of base of grants that we use also to operate from. Um, but, you know, to really continue to meet our clients, you know, where they're at, we do recognize that um, throughout the pandemic and as we look forward, that um, lack of affordable housing um, and sometimes the, the systematic and structural barriers that are in place um, that prevent families from reaching the housing that's out there, um, those are continuing. Okay. So let's unpack some of that. So you mentioned um, where, where does the funding uh, for your your budget come from? You mentioned it, it grants, I think, but uh, do you do, and donations and fundraising and things of that nature. How yeah. you know? How do you raise your money and and maybe how are you governed? Um, I would imagine sure. board of directors type of a setup, or how does that work? Absolutely, yep. Yeah, both really good questions, Chris. So on the funding side, you know, Haven House um, has an annual budget right around a million dollars a year. And really what that money on the outflow side is going out to do is for that emergency shelter, those prevention services. Um, and on, the, on coming in, um, we're pretty generally balanced between grant funding and community fundraising dollars or donations. So on the grant side, um, that's a mix of things like um, municipal grants from City of East Lansing, City of Lansing, um, other types of uh, nonprofit foundations like Jackson National Community Foundation and others, as well as some smaller foundations. Um, we also have been able to use some funding um, through CARES Act recently, um, particularly for um, supporting some of those um, pandemic shelter services. Now, the majority, or at least the slight majority of our funding, though, does come from 
um, members of the community. And so, you know, being an organization that's been around now almost 40 years, obviously we have a long, a lot of longtime supporters, um, but really the strength of that fundraising is in lots of smaller dollar donors. Um, for us, it's that um, awareness in the community. We do a number of uh, events throughout the year, including a Pancake Palooza fundraiser um, in the late winter, early spring. Um, we just got done doing a 5K event um, up at Lake Lansing Park. Um, so creating opportunities throughout the year for people to find out about what we do and get involved in ways from volunteering to financial support, um, that's really kind of the, the broadest, strongest part of our base to continue our operations. And as far as governance, you nailed it. Um, we are operated by a board of directors. Um, they're my bosses um, and really are you know, responsible for ensuring that you know, we are a financially strong organization, um, that we're doing what we say we will do according to our mission. Um, and that mission is guiding families on a path from um, wherever they are to permanent housing. And in some cases, that means helping keep them in housing. In other cases, it means providing shelter and helping them get to housing. Our board of directors recently completed a new five-year strategic plan, um, which is really geared towards that holistic sort of approach of not just surviving as an organization, but really making that impact in, in the community such that anyone who is in need of shelter, housing services, um, or other related types of help is going to get the help they need. And we recognize that Haven House may not do all that alone. A large part of what we do, Chris, is um, coordinating with a group called the Capital Region Housing Collaborative. Hmm. And that's an organization of um, not just shelters, but other human service agencies in the Lansing area um, who share a goal of making sure that every individual and household has that access they need to affordable housing. So what kind of impact do you actually have? Are there statistics about the number of people that you serve? Um, How does that work? Sure, absolutely. So, you know, I think it can be helpful just to set the, you know, the overall stage when people say, well, how many families or how many people are homeless in Michigan? Um, there's two numbers that typically get thrown out, and they can both be kind of misleading. But just for context, generally what people say is that on any given night in Michigan, as many as 8,000 individuals are homeless. And what that tends to measure is um, generally kind of the standing chronically homeless population. That includes people who are in an emergency shelter. It also includes people who might be under a bridge. Now, overall, over the course of a year, um, according to MISHTA, what we tend to find is that a much higher number, more like 60,000 individuals, tend to experience homelessness at least one point throughout a year in Michigan. Those numbers are going back to about 2019 or 2020. Hmm. Now, part of what's misleading about that is the definition of homelessness, because according to the strictest definition of homelessness, which is what Mishta uses, you've really got to be either in an emergency shelter or out on the streets to be counted as homeless. Now, there's a slightly broader definition, sometimes called the McKinney-Vento definition, that comes from the legislation that affects schools. And if we really consider families who don't have their own place but might be doubled up, um, you know, in a place that's really not made to fit two families, um, or they might be kind of flying under the radar. Maybe the the kids are couch surfing or staying with family and friends while, you know, the parents are not able to provide the housing. Um, That really swells the numbers. And so um, when we take those broader definitions, the numbers can really climb a bit higher. And if we extend that, there's a group that um, we refer to as our ALICE families. ALICE stands for Asset Limited Income Constrained and Employed. Now, on paper, what this really means is we're talking about the working poor. Most families who find themselves in this definition tend to consider themselves working class. And really, the key there is these are families that do not have a um, you know, bunch of money in mutual funds. They do not have intergenerational wealth, but they've got a job. Um, they often do have a home, but they're right on the cusp. And that's when we go back to realizing that, you know, that, that one month of savings can make the difference. So. Against that backdrop, what we tend to see um, in kind of the mid-Michigan counties of Ingham, Eaton, and Clinton, um, as many as 5,000 individuals homeless uh, in, in a given year. And, and right here in Ingham County, over the last few years, that number has hovered right around 2,000. Um, so, you know, obviously that's a big problem. Haven House 
historically has focused on what we call a family. For us, that's at least one parent or guardian with at least one child or dependent. We try to be as inclusive as possible in that sense. So that means same-sex parents are okay. It could be a grandpa or grandma who's got custody of the kids. It could be um, a parent whose child is over 18, but um, because of a physical or mental disability, um, they are the, the caregiver. So with that inclusive definition, over the last decade, we've averaged more than 100 families each year that we provide emergency shelter to, and usually dozens more on top of that that we're providing prevention services to. Now, with the pandemic, we did uh, see a slight drop in the demand, especially because of those eviction moratoria happening. Um, we also saw that all the local shelters saw somewhat of a drop in their capacity, either because we were spacing families out more um, for social distancing or because of utilizing those non-congregate hotel options, um, which sometimes had their own limitations of availability. So in general, what we're seeing at Haven House is um, upwards of 100 families each year who actually are coming into that emergency shelter situation, and again, dozens more typically who we are able to either help them keep their housing um, or obtain new housing without having to actually come into shelter, which is um, generally the preferred outcome. And so what are the qualifications and how do people get involved with Haven House? If, if you're in need and you're hearing this or you know someone who's in need who isn't hearing this, mm -hmm. do they knock on the door? Do they send you an email? Do they um, fill out a form? How does that work? Great question. Um, the simplest and most straightforward way to get help from us is to call us on the phone. And if you're in the Lansing area, it's 517-337-2731. If you Google Haven House or Homeless Shelter, um, you can also get a hold of us that way. For some families, especially if they don't have access to a phone, they're out of minutes or any other situation, we may get an email um, or we may get um, you know, a secondhand contact from someone saying, hey, I know someone who's in need of help. So really kind of no wrong door. Um, as, as long as someone reaches out to us, our next step is going to be to get one of our case managers um, to work directly with that family. Um, we'll typically ask a number of questions, especially about where they are, where they stayed last night, you know, who's in their family, trying to find um, the most immediate needs and how we can help um, alleviate those pressures. So, you know, maybe a family found out that they're going to need to be moving soon, but they are, they can stay where they are for now. That's great. We're going to encourage them to stay where they are, you know, not abandon their home um, if they can still stay there. Another family may call us and let us know that they are, you know, been sleeping in the car and they have no other options. So really that first point of contact is super crucial. Um, so we can kind of triage, um, figure out the situation. And again, we can't do this alone in the community. So if someone's calling us uh, and they're a single individual or a childless couple, um, we are going to be working closely with that household to connect them with other shelters in the area. And there's a number of them. I'd like to holler them out because we are really partners in this in this work. But sure. Holy Cross Services, City Rescue Mission, um, Loaves and Fishes, Homeless Angels is another one. Each of us has a bit of our own niche in terms of some of our, you know, um, our strengths um, and, and the target population we focus on. But really anybody in the area who is facing homelessness or is experiencing homelessness, kind of back to that no wrong door approach, you might call whichever homeless shelter pops to the top of your Google search. And if that uh, homeless shelter either is at capacity that day or doesn't specialize in, in your particular subpopulation, you don't have to be stuck and calling around and trying to figure it out. Each of us in the community here as homeless providers is working um, to connect anyone who calls us with kind of the right um, agency um, for a given person situation. Got it. All right. Well, we're up against the clock, so I want to ask you just, uh, you know, if, if people are intrigued by this and, and or affected by this um, or want to donate or, or volunteer, I would imagine all of that's on the table. So can you remind us of, of the website and, and how people can get in touch with you? Absolutely. HavenhouseEL.org is the website. That's HavenhouseEL, like East Lansing. You can also find us um, under that same tag, HavenhouseEL, on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and really reaching out by phone, 517-337-2731. Um, or by email, info at havenhouseel.org, um, whether it's volunteering, a desire to support us financially, or if you know someone who's in need um, and could use the help, please don't hesitate to reach out. 
Well, thanks for sharing your story. We've been talking with the executive director for Haven House here in East Lansing, uh, Gabriel Biber. Gabe, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate learning more, and I hope the audience did as well. Thanks a lot, Chris.